Hey, hello, this is Jonathan Miller once again with the Hometown Historian Channel. We are here at the Jonestown Reformed and Old Cemetery. It's actually sort of a cool story that the reason I'm here is one that Cliff had told me about, and I think he had done a video at some point on this. So we're actually going to search for the grave marker where this is. Uh, Jonestown is a small town here in Pennsylvania and uh, is actually named after the founder William Jones. It was originally called Williamsburg. It was founded in 1761 and uh, eventually they wound up switching the uh, name because there was a lot of confusion with Williamsburg, uh, Virginia. So they had decided that they were going to uh, Switched that name to Jonestown, still in honor of William Jones, who founded the town. But, uh, yeah, so this is a pretty old, this is like Revolutionary War and it's like that as well. Uh, but there's a pretty cool story. The reason we're actually here is to visit a grave. It's not actually of a person, it's of a part of his body. His name was Harrison Schatzner, I believe, or Schatzer. And he uh, was, there's an old hotel tavern here in town called the Buck Hotel and that uh, hotel in 1888 had a uh, owner or the proprietor's name was the Harrison I believe Schatzer and or Schart, Schart, sorry, Schartzer and he was riding on his horse and carriage down along the Swatera Creek near the railroad line and unfortunately for him his horse got spooked and threw him off the carriage or off his wagon and he fell in front of the train now I'm assuming he just got hit the one leg got hit by the train because they said he wasn't able to get his one leg out of the way and that they took him over to it's called the Central Hotel which was on the other side of the creek I believe and the doctor decided they had to amputate his leg so he is not buried here he is actually buried he died sometime later he actually lived i think a full life he's buried over at the lutheran cemetery which at some point we'll do that one and we'll see if we can find his actual grave site but he had his leg buried here in between his parents grave markers so we're going to see if we can find that here it is here in this cemetery is where this is buried uh, Jonestown Historical Society also runs, which I don't think the last last year they didn't run it because of the whole COVID thing, but they've run like a, a haunted thing, but they go through the cemetery. It's a really neat event, and hopefully they maybe run that again this year. Whether they do or not, a lot of these smaller historical societies, they sort of tend more on the side of caution in that regard. Because like Monterey Valley Chapel was running those Christmas services and they're not going to do them again this year simply because it's just, it's a lot. Um, also been doing a lot more research on cemeteries and uh, found out like these ones where they have the hands combined on the tombstone is either it's, it's God shaking hands with people or it's a beloved husband and wife being reunited that type of stuff but it was cool a lot of different little things they were talking I actually found out from the Jonestown Historical Society about what some of these things actually mean like they mean different things over time but at the time when they made these markers that's what they meant so I'm assuming he might be over in this area somewhere because a lot of these look like they might be Revolutionary War but this is definitely is a cemetery with a lot of age in fact it looks like there's a Revolutionary War marker right here which this stone looks like it has been cleaned. Uh, Johannes Spittler. That's pretty, that's pretty neat. He was a Revolutionary War vet. Uh, he died 1820. He was, uh, and he was in German, I think 1719. So he lived, if that's 1719, that's, he's 101 years old, or at least 100 years old. It's pretty impressive. There's another one that looks like it was cleaned as well. I always find, find these old, like, I think the wreath, I forget what that means, but that had a, had a really special meaning as well. So it's pretty neat stuff. So let's go, let's go over here and let's see in this part of the cemetery, which is a little bit newer, which would be around the time, 1888, when he had his leg removed and it would have been buried 
with his parents. Uh, <coughs> like I say, Cliff had done a video out here at some point. It's just a really unique, like, local story. And I'm assuming it says something about the, the guy's leg is actually buried right in between the tombstones of his parents. So I'm hoping we find it. holidays there's a few more of those ones where the hands are held together there sort of wonder who might be It is Harrison Scharcher, so I don't know if, like I said, I'm assuming from what Cliff told me that there's some kind of marking. For his leg. But regardless, I mean, I'm hoping, like I said, I'm hoping we find it, but uh, it is a pretty cool, unique story. I have to say as well, a uh, special shout out to Jay and Rebecca, two of my viewers. They, uh, I did the video I put out today and it was pretty neat. Um, I couldn't find anything on, and I even looked up, or at least attempted to look up online, the, uh, this might actually be it up here. Yep, this is it. Yeah, I think I, that's that sharks are there. So this that middle piece there, that would actually be that would be where his whether it says something here or not, I'm not seeing anything, but I am assuming because that is definitely that's that's sh Shartle. Yeah, it was Shartle. Yeah, William Shardle, and that's that would be his mother. I can't, I think it looks like Leah. But then this here, that stone right there would be the stone that is put in place for where Harrison Shardle's leg is buried in between his mother and father. So it's a really unique, interesting story. Um, just one of those weird stories and the history of these small towns that you sometimes run across i figure while we're here though we'll go through the cemetery here a little bit more and we'll see what we can find but this is the jonestown reformed and that would be one of those they were like calvinists and they usually went with like lutheran churches and uh they also call them i think believe union churches uh and the lutheran church is actually out that way but it's a massive cemetery it's like 3,000 burials so trying to find Harrison's grave marker it's probably gonna be sort of hard if I have more time I want to try to do one more video uh, today but and with my foot being the way it is I don't want to try to do too much because right now my foot is not real happy so anyways we will go through here like I said it does look like there's a bunch of stuff that's definitely revolutionary war era but that was pretty neat to be able to find that but it was definitely it was his dad was the uh the william there so that was my last name john miller no relation pine grove for me region and that is freaky <laughs> not quite sure what happened there but somebody escaped or not area. I think I just 
over time, sometimes these graves, like they settle, you know, coffins or whatever, break down and that kind of stuff can happen. Yeah, a lot of these are just beyond being able to be read. But I have been saying earlier, and I got off track, which seems to happen with me quite a bit, but I wanted to say a special thank you to Jay and uh, to Rebecca, because they both found out with the uh, cemetery today that, or that I put up the video, I filmed it yesterday, uh, out near Campbelltown, I could not find anything. Like I had gone on the online version of Find a Grave, but I just couldn't get through and try to figure out what it is. But why not find, I think it was at Bateman House Cemetery and Bright Bill, also known as Bright Bill Meeting House Cemetery. A lot of times those meeting houses were either, uh, another viewer, David, had said it could be like a Quaker meeting house. Uh, Quakers were usually just a little further south, so it was probably more likely it was a Mennonite, but it could have very well been a Quaker. It sort of threw me a little bit because there is one or two veterans in there, and normally uh, you don't have veterans in like Mennonites or Quaker meeting house cemeteries. It's just sort of how it is. Um, but the building sort of the more I think about it, the more I think about what the building looks like that it's probably a high likelihood that that's what it was is that was probably the meeting house it certainly has the age I want to check this out and see who this is some war vet there Miley I believe is yeah Henry Miley born 1806 I'm not sure it's 1846. A little maybe 1848 because he looks like he's 42 years old. But usually if you had stones like this, you uh were pretty well off. It's always sort of interests me is like where was uh the founder of the town, the William Jones, where is he buried? A lot of times you can't like you maybe they were in family plots or something of that nature and you just can't find a lot of those places sometimes we're going to go back over through here because that looks because it has that crown along the top those are usually revolutionary war vets this area i want to check out but i think this one has from reading to find a grave it's about 300 some burials in here but it's pretty neat just the, the look of the stones and try to find out more information about but there's definitely there's a revolutionary war vet over there or at least one that's a Walter it's a whole bunch of, a couple mall fairs on there as well huh. but these small cemeteries I never realized that this cemetery was as old as it was because my doctor's office was right over there and you just sort of I don't know you go buy stuff and like I say quite a bit like you go buy things like that and you don't realize how important the history is it's sitting right there and there is a Johann Christopher Lurch Revolutionary War Captain Ritter's company 1758 to 1823. A Civil War vet there at Grand Army of the Republic. Usually these stones were pretty popular Revolutionary War period. They did go well beyond that, but usually if you see those types of stones, that's representative that a lot of the German communities as well, these were very popular, the style of the stone. But anyways, Jay and Rebecca, I give a special thank you to you guys because the information that you guys gave. Jay is also, I believe he was uh, the one as well that figured out the uh, Nafsinger plot. I had, that was I think my second video at Small sem uh, Family Cemetery. And I had named it the Stauffer Cemetery because that was the only tombstone that was legible because it was a new one. Uh, I believe it was a David. Stauffer, he was a World War II vet. 
and uh, anyways, he's the one that found that as well. So I did change that one as well. And the Cleona one that was hidden in a cornfield, that one I found out is known as the Bowman Kreider Farm uh, family plot. I'm assuming the Bowmans are the ones that owned the farm originally and then the Criders bought it from them because primarily the people that are buried there in that Cleona one are Criders. I think there's two other ones beyond that family, but uh, the earliest burial there was 1725, which that might be the earliest stone that I've come across with the date. These are really, really neat. Like, the writing on them is just, I've never, like, this one's probably the best one that you can see. How it's just, it's, it's German, but it's really quite neat. As the, like I said before, the wreaths mean something specific to the person. And then whenever you see usually like a lamb or an angel, something of that nature, that's symbolic that's probably a child. A lot of it has to do with the, the innocence of the children. Magdalena. She was born in 1818 and died in 1888. This one's really pretty too. It looks like it's like a tree. But that like carving on that is unbelievable. Like they really, the people that did these, man, they were, they were uh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant artisans because it truly was an art form. And here's a couple that are turned the other way. And once again, these are all in German. These community is the majority of them. German. So there's at least two or three, I think there's three Revolutionary War vets in this. Oh, these ones I always was the flat ones. And this is in German. Jacob Gasser. 1798. Only lived eight. It looks like 1818. Yeah. So that's the story of Harrison uh, Schartzer and his leg, which is buried here at his uh, parents' grave. Unfortunately, there's nothing written there, but that, that was a story I was given by Cliff, and it's the one I also read uh, off of the Jonestown Historical Society. They talk about that. And just one of those unique local stories I figured I'd share with you. It's a cool, cool little cemetery here. Um, and I will say once again to my viewers, thank you because you guys do make this a blast and it's cool to be able to learn this different stuff because you, you you can search and search and sometimes you just don't find anything and uh having that find a grave app that i downloaded now rebecca had said and jay had said as well i should download that and uh it is a huge help it's another tool resource that i can now has like a gps feature where you can see exactly what the cemetery is that you're at at the present moment and also there's a lot of really neat old family, family cemetery plots like farm plots so there'll be a bunch that i'll be checking out and doing for you guys and uh thank you once again to everybody and uh we will see you about town